Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are going to look at gateway clusters, what they are, and why you should care about them. Let's go. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, gateway clusters, what are they? The whole idea of a gateway cluster is about high availability. So this is a cluster that has more than one gateway inside of it. By default, you will have, if you install a new gateway, it will create a gateway cluster and it'll just have one gateway. But what happens? That's a single point of failure. So let's take a look at if I do have that single point of failure, my gateway, normally, if I'm going to refresh my data, it's going to go through, refresh the data, everything's fine. But what happens when that gateway is unavailable? Maybe the machine crashed, or maybe the gateway service is offline for some reason on that machine. Now I have a point of failure. So any of my refreshes that are trying to go through that gateway won't succeed. However, if I have a second gateway as part of that gateway cluster, and we go into the same situation, gateway one is the primary gateway. All the refreshers are gonna go through it. If that gateway is down for whatever reason, maybe it's being updated, maybe Windows decided to reboot, maybe you got a blue screen, who knows? Then gateway two will then service those requests, maintaining high availability for your business and making sure that those refreshes do succeed. Now, one thing to understand is that you have to have a different physical machine for each gateway. So if you do have two gateways in a cluster, you have to have two physical machines to service those gateways, right? So one on-premises data gateway enterprise mode per physical machine. And that physical machine could be a VM in Azure. It's just, you know, a Windows device, a Windows machine of some kind, right? So that needs to be there. All right, enough of all this talking. Let's head over to my computer and see what this looks like. All right, we are in my Power BI workspace. This is the same report and data set that I configured in the last video in the series. So if you missed that, go check it out. I'll have a link up above for that. And then if we go to the data sets tab here, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. And we're gonna go look at the SQL server to see where this is going. I've got a profiler trace running right now so we can see what machine this is coming with. Right now, I've only got one gateway in the gateway cluster. So let's go ahead and refresh that. If we head over to my SQL box, we will see that this is coming in and we can see the host name of Guy in a Cube SQL, right? So this is the machine that it is running on. That's the same machine that the SQL server's on. So that all makes sense. Cool. Got one gateway and we've got one gateway cluster that's coming in here. All right, let's clear that out. Now let's go ahead and install a second gateway here. All right, when we go to install a second gateway, let me go ahead and hit next here. So we're gonna do an enterprise gateway. All right, I'm gonna accept, install. All right, and here I'm gonna just sign in. So you notice the actual install is no different than just installing any gateway. So let's go ahead and sign in. When we wanna add a gateway to an existing cluster, we still have to choose the register a new gateway on this computer. Right, so we're not migrating or restoring or taking over. So we're gonna choose the, the default radio dial option and hit next. And then let's go and give it a name. Now, the big difference here is we're gonna put a check into add to an existing gateway cluster. When we do that, it's gonna give us a drop down to choose the gateway cluster. And these are clusters that we're an admin of. So I'm not gonna be able to add it to any cluster in the tenant, just the ones that I'm listed as an admin. Then check that. All right, and then the available gateway clusters, we can see that we've got Gateway Contoso, and then I'm gonna give this gateway a recovery key as well. Remember to keep that gateway recovery key in a safe spot in case you do need to migrate or move a gateway. All right, and then we'll hit configure. All right, so our gateway is ready and online, good to go. All right, and of note, I installed that on my actual desktop machine, so I've got a gateway on my desktop machine and I've got a gateway in my SQL server machine. So let's go ahead and expand this out a little bit. Shrink this so that we can actually see. Really, this is the column that we care about, this host name column. So now there is PowerShell command that's available for you to actually make use and visualize the gateway cluster. 
Also, if we go over to the Power Platform Admin Center, which is admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com, and if we go look, I'll select my gateway, Contoso gateway, uh, from the list here of gateway clusters. And if I actually look at info here, you'll see that the two gateways are listed here. So my first one on the SQL server is primary, and then I've got my second one as well. And you can see the device names that are different between them. From a PowerShell perspective, and I'll have a link down in the description below to the actual PowerShell documentation where you can look at this. Uh, it gives you the commands to install and also the command just to get a list of what actual PowerShell commands are available. I ran that command and here we can see, look, I just wanna get a list of the gateway clusters. And again, these are gonna be the clusters that I have admin rights to. And so we can see here, we have the actual gateway object ID. Uh, and then we've got the first gateway, which is listed as the anchor gateway. And that's got the same uh, ID as the cluster. You can see here the gateway machine itself down below. So this will tell you where that is located. You'll also be able to see the version of the gateway and whether or not there's an update available or not. So the then we'll see the second gateway that's there as well. And we can see again, here's the machine that it is. Here's the version information. And this is not the anchor gateway or the primary gateway. The other thing you'll notice down below here is this load balance type. By default, it's set for failover. So this is that high availability scenario where I said, if the first gateway goes down, the second gateway is gonna pick it up, right? So that's what failover means in this case. All right, so let's test that theory. Let me go back to my SQL box and I'm gonna disable the on-premises data gateway that's there. So I'm just gonna stop the service. And this is gonna simulate as if that gateway is actually down or not available. Let me also grab the ID of the second gateway. I'll need that later. If we go back up to our list of items, I can go and get a given gateway status. So let me do that. We'll get the gateway status of the primary gateway. And the ID happens to be the same for the gateway as the, the cluster. And then we can see that this gateway is not reachable, right? And so that's because I turned it off. So it doesn't know that it's there. So in theory, any request that I do, so any refresh that I do should now go through the gateway on my GIAC desktop machine, not the Gynacube SQL machine. So let's go ahead and refresh again. Let's go back to our SQL server and see what happens. Bam. And we can see right away that these are actually now going through GIAC desktop instead of the GIAC SQL machine. That's bananas, right? So now it's actually utilizing the either gateway, depending on which one's up, right? So if the first one's up, it's gonna use the first one always. If the second, if the first one's down, then it's gonna kick over to the second gateway and it just transitioned naturally, right? So it failed over to the second one. That is amazing. And that's how I would expect it to work, right? So this maintains that a gateway is up and running for any refresh request or direct query or whatever that we've got running through this. So that's how failover works. And that's, you know, it, it's always gonna go through that primary gateway, that first gateway, right? Unless it goes down, then it will go to another one. But what about the idea of utilizing that second gateway, right? I don't want it just sitting there on a machine always up, right? That's a waste of resources. So what if there was a way we could say, hey, let's actually pump those refresh requests and direct query through the different gateways that are part of the cluster. So to do this, let's go back to my machine. And here, let's go to manage the gateway. So I'm gonna go up to the gear icon up top and then I'm gonna come down to manage gateways. And in here, I've got my actual cluster. There is a selection down below which says distribute requests across all active gateways in the cluster. So what does this do? Taking a look again, I've got my two gateways in my gateway cluster. So when the first request comes through, whether it's refresh or direct query or whatnot, the first gateway is going to handle that. And then when the next refresh request comes through, it's gonna to go to the second gateway and then it's just gonna go back and forth. So it's really a round robin type approach to distribution, right? So there's no fancy policy. There's no, you know, weighted items that come through. 
it's just going to go one after the other and switch between whatever. So if I had four gateways in the cluster, it's just going to go down the line and then come back to the first one and then go down the line again. Make sense? All right. So let's go ahead and check that and then we'll hit apply. And now we'll come back to our demo, back to our data set. So remember what I said before, the first request should go through the primary gateway and then the second request should go through the second gateway. So to do this, let's just make sure everything's clear. All right. Gonna come down. So Gynacube SQL is the first gateway. GIC desktop is the second gateway. Let's go and hit refresh. And we'll see right now it's going through GIC desktop because that was the last gateway that was primary that it was going through. So that's okay. So we're going through gateway two right now. Let's go and refresh it again. And now we're seeing it go through Gynacube SQL. So it's cycling through the different machines. So it's kind of a random approach too. So it's kind of hit or miss on which one it's going to go through. So that's, that's bananas, right? It's crazy. So you can actually have multiple gateways being utilized to allow you to scale out your request load from a gateway perspective. So that way, if you find that one gateway is just overloaded, right? We've got too much stuff going through it. We can add other gateways to the cluster and then select the distribution checkbox for that gateway cluster and then have those different uh, gateways take part and spread that load out across those items. So that's pretty cool. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What do you think? Was this, did this blow your mind? Were you aware of gateway clusters to begin with? Or does this really give you good insights into how you can really take advantage of gateways in your organization. Let me know down in the comments below. I want to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.